One of my earliest memories involves me thinking that my dad was wrong. I was about five years old. My sister was three. It was a clear winter day, so our dad took us tobogganing. I was looking forward to this trip. I was allowed to go down on my own on the one condition that I didn't go down a very specific side of the hill. According to my dad, a bunch of big kids made ramps at the bottom. Now, I knew what a ramp was, but I had a tough time understanding why they were bad. So I decided to investigate, and when I looked over the edge, I saw nothing. No ramps, no danger. Without a second thought, I figured, well, I guess it is safe to go down. Better bring my sister. I'm not very sure how we managed to pull this off without our dad noticing, but I imagine he was too busy surveying the hillside for his own joyride. All that I can remember is the mortified look on his face as I and my little sister waved goodbye as we began our descent. As it turned out, there was a ramp, we hit it, and we went soaring through the air. By the time we returned to the earth, I realized that my sister wasn't with me anymore. I don't remember going back after that. There are many ways to share lived experiences. There's the traditional autobiography, which has long been considered the most accessible literary genre. Other forms of life writing include memoirs, diaries, testimonies, obituaries, and so on. But the medium in which we share these stories matters. The graphic narrative is one of my favorite forms of storytelling. It uses a combination of text and images to represent its story, and is very capable of maintaining a level of sophistication often attributed to traditional autobiography. Take, for example, Ali Brosh's graphic memoir, Hyperbole and a Half, which chronicles some of her childhood experiences. The subject matter ranges from cake-obsessed antics to the very poignant portrayals of clinical depression. I think that this medium is effective, and I'm not alone. Scholars like Amelia DeFalco argue that graphic narratives complicate our traditional reading of texts, like caregiving memoirs, allowing for experiences to not only be read, but also seen. This extends to any life-writing narrative, whether it be medical in nature or a goofy anecdote. Visual elements allow us to embody our experiences in ways that aren't always afforded by plain text. In graphic narrative theory, we recognize the heightened accessibility of visual media like comics and the graphic memoir, but what about stories that employ animation? I'm not the first person to argue that cartoons are worthy of scholarly criticism, but we seem to be overlooking some significant phenomena within our digital spaces. Allow me to expand the reach of life writing into what I call animated life writing. These cartoons of interest exist as an alternative to static, text-based media. To put it simply, if the narrative is animated and it appeals to any genre of life writing, then we can call it animated life writing. We actually see this style practiced quite often. For instance, platforms like YouTube have cultivated a community of storytime animators that engage in animated life writing as their primary storytelling method. These digital spaces generally offer free video hosting, making it easy for anyone to share their experiences in animated form. Of course, not everyone is going to animate their life writing, just like not everyone is going to draw them out into a comic. However, the lack of barriers in online publishing make this style a very real possibility for those whose primary or preferred mode of expression is drawing rather than writing. As the author of my work, I get to decide the best way to share my experiences. A story about disobeying my dad could be made as part of a collection of short stories, but the way that I envision this experience is best represented by the cartoon. Essentially, I find that Scott McCloud's comments on comics apply perfectly to my views of the cartoon. It is a vessel which can hold any number of ideas and images. The content of those images and ideas is, of course, up to the creators, and we all have different tastes. The trick is to never mistake the message for the messenger. If we agree that the genres of life writing are independent from the modes in which they are delivered, then animated life writing is definitely an area that graphic narrative studies will find worthy of investigation. The visuality of the cartoon obviously appeals to traditional methods of comicking, but the real value in animated life writing comes from what it can do that paper cannot. Time is represented in movement rather than repeated panels, and diegetic sound creates an immersive auditory experience that we rarely see outside experimental prose. Regardless of our scholarly goals, it's evident that our digital spaces are reshaping narrative traditions, and the popularization of these animated narratives is certainly an area worth exploring. And with that, I invite scholars and practitioners to approach animated life writing like we do with graphic narratives. As a visual medium, animation appeals to certain principles of comics while also expanding into new methods of embodiment that are favorable to writers and viewers that might not generally engage in life writing. And if you're still here, thank you so much for making it to the end. 
As great as time-based communications are, it is quite time-consuming to produce these type of videos. Therefore, some content actually didn't make it to the final cut. By the time of this recording, I've spent about a month working in all areas of production, and that includes drafting, storyboarding, animating, editing, and of course editing some more. I'm probably going to do more of that after this. It's a pretty involving process, but I'm not exaggerating when I say that it never really felt like work. If anything in this video appeals to you, then I highly encourage you to read my paper of the same name, that's animated life writing. Definitely tag me in your own animated life writing, I'd love to see how others are engaging with this type of content. A big thank you to my supervisors, if it weren't for them, this project would have been entirely different and definitely not as dynamic. And finally, thank you to all of the people that supported me throughout my studies, I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching.